Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. I think it's, it is Wednesday, right? Yeah, it is Wednesday. Just checking. How is everyone doing? Um, it's really great to see so many of you here again for Lockdown Learning Round 2. Um, I had lots of fun yesterday covering the topics in English. Um, and I'm even more excited to go over some maths problems today. We're going over bid maths. So bid maths is um, well, I'm not going to tell you what it means yet because you're going to tell me. It's all about ordering operations in maths. So this lesson is aimed for ages 7 to 11. So we're going to start easy and get progressively harder. Um, I hope, can everyone, let me know if um, you can't hear me. I think it's, um, I think it's working. But yeah, so that's what we're doing. Hey, it's great to see so many um, names again. Hey, Albert. Hey, Hayley. Hey, Anch. Um, and we're also streaming this on YouTube if you want to watch there, but you get to vote in the polls and stuff here too, which is fun. Um, good morning, everyone. So yes, today is all about maths. We are going to be doing some rapid fire maths questions. We are gonna go over some harder wordy questions a bit later. So we're gonna look at how to do multi-step problems in maths, which is really, which is quite difficult and is important for um, exams maybe at the end of year six, or if you have any admissions tests coming up anything like that. Um, make sure that you are, if you're joining us on Zoom, make sure you have the desktop version of Zoom so you can vote in the polls. I'll be asking for, I'll be asking for some answers in the chat too. Um, so make sure you're ready to go. Um, you should be able to see the chat um, somewhere on your screen on Zoom, it should pop up. Um, I can already see a lot of you already know what bid mass is. Well done, Hugh. Well done, Anch. Um, well done, Noel. We already know those definitions. I'm going to be asking everyone for those definitions a little bit later. Um, what I'll do is um, I will be leading the lesson like yesterday. And then we have um, our glorious co-trainer, co Clem, who will be answering questions on the Q&A in Zoom. So what I'll do is I will share my screen in just a second. Um, and then we will get going. Do, 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 share my screen, get ready to learn. Okay, so we should all be able to see the presentation now. I'll keep my eye on the chat because we've got some questions coming up. If you're joining, this is a 45 minute math lesson where we're gonna be going over bid maths. So we'll have a few warm up questions. I'll talk through what we're gonna cover in just a second. Um, but make sure you've got a pen and paper because you're going to need to be doing some um, working out. So there's some hard questions. They're going to get progressively harder. And make sure you're going to be, I want to see who's going to get the answers first on the poll. I want to see who's going to answer the first, the question first in the Q&A. So um, make sure you are ready to go. Okay, so it's just coming up for nine o'clock. So I am gonna have a sip of my coffee to get, to get me ready for this lesson. And then we're good to go up and out of second lockdown lesson. Um, I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe. I know it's a really stressful time in the world right now. So well done for being proactive in your learning and coming to this lesson and doing some learning on 9 a.m. on a Wednesday. It's really good. We're gonna try and make this a fun 45 minutes. So I hope you are ready to do some maths. Right, so what are we gonna be covering today? We're doing orders of operations. So we're gonna start with some easier questions, some mental maths, just to get your brains nice and supple and ready to learn. Then we're gonna get a little bit harder. We're gonna have some multi-step problems. And then we're gonna end the lesson with some hard wordy problems. So hopefully there should be something um, for everyone in this lesson. If you get stuck on the harder problems, I will be explaining them. So stick around if you wanna see the explanations. It's always good practice. Even if you don't know, don't be scared. We're gonna go over them and um, hopefully make it a little bit easier. Okay, so just to get us warmed up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask people a few questions about bid mass. So if you are on the, if you're on Zoom, type the answer into the chat. Otherwise, just shout it out at your screen. Um, and I'll pretend I can listen and hear you. So a lot of you have already answered this question, but I just want to make sure we're all on the same page here. Okay. So what does the B in bid mass stand for? Who's going to get this answer first? What does the B in bid mass stand for? Just the B. 
Oh, I, answers are flying in. Amazing. Really, really good job, everybody. Yep. Well done. The B stands for um, brackets. Really, really good. Well done, Mia. Um, well done, Ninja. Hey, cool name. Um, really, really good. So B stands for brackets. We'll be going over all of these in a second. This is just a warm up. So if you find it a bit easy, don't worry. I've got some, I got some treats in store for you. So what does the D in bid mass stand for? Can anyone tell me what the D in bid mass stands for? Well done, Kathana. Yep, well done. It is division. Really, really good. Ah, oh, you guys are doing so, so well this morning. Well done. Really strong math knowledge. Okay, so that's what the D in bid math stands for. What about the S? What does the S in bid math stand for? Can you tell me? Yep, well done, Simon. Well done, Ziang. Yep, really, really good. So the S stands for subtraction. So when we take something away, um, really, really good. Flying in with the arts is really good, really good work, everyone. It's great to see you so engaged and ready to learn. Okay, I think there's maybe one more of these. Okay, this is a hard one. What does the I in bid math stands for? Do we know what the I stands for? Yep, well done. It is indices. Really, really good. Yep, well done. So indices are like powers. If you haven't come across that word before, we'll go over some examples. But an indice is just like a power. So like um, something like two squared, that the small little baby two. So if I'll show you what an indice looks like, what color pen should I use? Ooh. Well, it is, it's, I'll start with a pink because you can't really go wrong with pink, can you? So an indice, if we have, oh, not drawing yet. If we have something like uh, two, oh, my pen is just not feeling me today. So let me see if, I, okay, pen's not working. You will see it, we'll see an indice in a second anyway, but it's like that cute little small letter that you see on top of a bigger number. I'll show you what one is in a second. So really good job on the warm up, everybody. Um, I hope our brains are nice and supple and ready. But this is what bid math stands for, okay? Brackets, oh, get ready for some great animation, by the way, if I do say so myself, hopefully it works. <laughs> brackets, boom. So every time you see brackets, brackets are important. They wanna go first. So brackets, top of the food chain, okay? Then we have indices. There we go, I told you it was coming. An indice is just a power. Plus you get to feel really fancy when you say the word indice. And that's, that's what I'm about. I just like feeling good about myself. Indices, that will help you do that. So that little two, we would say four squared, which is four times four. So four squared equals four times four. So we'll do any indices after we've done whatever's in the brackets. Then we have division. We all, we all love a bit of division, that nice little divide sign. Multiplication, boom, X. Then we have addition, then we have subtraction. So this is the order in which we need to do calculations. And we have a cute little pyramid with a nice smiley face to help us remember it. So brackets, indices, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. This is really like the backbone of maths. So once you get a good hand on bid maths, it becomes really important, not only in primary school, but when you get to high school, you're gonna be doing algebra and bid maths will still apply to any algebra calculations you need to do. So what we're trying to do is give you a really strong foundation um, in your math skills to help you um, a little bit, when, it will help you when it gets a little bit harder. Okay, so I hope we are ready for some questions. So what we're going to do, we've got some, a few questions just to get us used to the poll. So which of the following operations on the screen would you do first? A, B, C, D or E? So we had a long equation and we had all of these, which ones would we do first? Amazing job, 20 seconds in, and we already have 300 votes. Really, really good. I saw a few people get it in like two seconds. Well done, bravo. Okay, I'll give you another few seconds to have a vote. 
Great comment from Greg in the Q&A as well. Indices are also called exponents. Really, really good. And Leo, the B was for brackets. Um, and Esme, yes. So like square or cube numbers. Good one. Um, Amavir. Really, really, really great. Um, extra explanations coming in the Q&A. Supporting each other's learning. It's what I like to see. Okay, so we've had about a minute on the question. So I'm going to end the poll and see how we all voted. So we can see the majority of us went for A, which is um, the correct answer. Well done. So out of all of the options that were there, D, division, was the highest. So bid mass is what we, the division is what we do first. Very, very good. Okay, so Clementine is doing a, is doing a sum. She's laid out her answers step by step. Love that. But it's early in the morning, right? Clementine's made a mistake. Can anyone tell me A, B, C, D, a, B, C, or D, which step did Clementine make a mistake in? A, B, C, or D, where's the error? It's a really good job, about a hundred of us have already got the right answer, fantastic. Use bid mass to help you here. Oh, no one saw, no one saw. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, we've had about a minute, so I'm gonna end the poll and then I'll start talking through, actually I'll leave the poll running, I'll start talking through the answer. So we can see that we have 45 minus five times two plus two squared. Now we can use, now we need to use our bid mass pyramid to help us. So I can see an indice or an exponent there, that two squared. So that's the thing that we need to do first. If we look at Clementine's first step, we can see that great, she's done a great job. She's done two squared to give us four. So I know that the first step is A-OK. -okay. We've done that indice first. Now we've got addition, multiplication and a minus left, OK? So if we use our bid mass pyramid, what do we need to do next? Well, we need to do multiplication. So we need to do our five times two. Now, if we have a look at what Clementine's done, I think Clementine on the second step might have added the two and the four first, which is not what we want to do. So let's end the poll and see how everyone voted. Did we get B? Great job, well done to 50% of us that got B. A few of us went for A, um, and I know A looks a bit weird, but A is correct because all Clementine has done is expanded that indice. So it's done two squared, which is two times two, okay? So the right answer is B, there's an error in the second step. If you wanna see what this question should have looked like, this is what the working out should look like. So notice how we've got, notice how we have our, um, oh, notice how we have, our first step is fine. We have our nice little indice expanding two times two is four. Then we do our multiplication, five times two is 10. And then we do our, um, uh, then we have our third step and our fourth step to give us 39, okay? So that is how we need to order our operations. Right, are we ready for another question? I was clumsy when I was putting this presentation together and I forgot to put, a um, operation in this equation. So which one is missing? Missing. Who is gonna get the answer first? What is the missing operation? Boom, well done. 50 of us got the right answer in five seconds. Very impressive. So what operation is missing? Remember bid mass and remember to try, um, if you're unsure which, what you need to do, just put one of the operations in and see if it works. But remember to use the rules of bid mass to help you here.
Okay, 10 more seconds to get your votes and we've got about 90% of us voted already. Okay, let's see how we voted. Boom, 84% uh, of us, 472 um, eager mathematicians amongst us went for answer option A, which is correct. So three times two, um, three times two times six, three times two is six, six times six gives us 36. So we just need to put in our nice little multiplication in to get our right answer. Really nice job, everybody. Um, and great, um, great maths this morning. So these are some nice questions to get us warmed up. I think we're gonna go over a quick tip and then we've got some rapid fire mental math questions. I'll give you maybe 30 seconds if I'm feeling generous, but this is all about quick mental maths to help you with um, men any mental math test you've got coming up. Um, so I'm only gonna leave the poll running for about 30 seconds and so make sure you remember this rule. When we're doing a calculation, the order, we don't just go left to right. It's not like when we're reading a book, yeah? Save that for English club. What we need to do is we need to order it depending on bid mass. So bid mass is like a pyramid hierarchy that's gonna give us everything we need to do our maths problems. We just need to follow that order, brackets, indices, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Um, when we're doing a calculation, we don't just do it from left to right, okay? That's, that's my tip. Don't forget the bid mass pyramid. Um, you can have this one or you can have the cute one with the smiley face. I don't mind. Just make sure you remember the order of your operations. Okay, I think I've done enough bid mass teaching now. I think you're ready to fly the nest and do some questions yourself. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some questions up on the screen. Rapid fire, ma mental maths. I'll give you about 30 seconds for the answer and then we'll move on. Okay, so are we ready? I will launch the poll in anticipation and we'll start that we'll start easy and get harder so what is seven times eight a or b Ooh, interesting oh can we sorry i don't think you can see the screen <laughs> my bad <laughs> you should be able to see the calculation now seven times eight Thank you for everyone that pointed out the screen wasn't sharing. I'll give you a bit longer because you couldn't see it. Okay. Five more seconds, four, three, two, one. How do we do? So 82% of us went for answer option A, 56, which is right, well done. Straight into the next one, three plus six minus two, let's go. Relaunch the poll, go. A or B, is it 11 or seven? Can we get everyone's answers in, in 30 seconds? Okay, 10 seconds, 50% of you have answered correctly. Well done. Ooh, are we gonna do it? Are we gonna do it? 10 more seconds to get your answer in. Okay, three. Two, one, a well done to 90% of us who got 600 of us got that answer in, in time. I'm really impressed, well done. And we can see that the major, the 93% of us went for B, which is correct, well done. Um, let, I'm, I'm, this is great, I'm having so much fun. I'm gonna give you another one, let's go. Okay, simple addition question. What is the answer to the question on the street screen? 30 seconds, the poll has just launched. A or B, let's go. Ah, oh, lightning speed from 150 of you getting the right answer straight away. Also, I think I missed someone's math pun in the chat. Please repeat the pun so I can see it, Kiran. I love a math pun. Okay, let's see. So I'm gonna end the poll now. How do we all do? Boom, okay. Again, 89% of us went for A, which is the correct answer. Well done, one, one, one. Okay, three plus six times four. Don't forget bid mass when you're answering this question, please. 
I've given you your hint. You've got 30 seconds. Let's go. Is it A or B? Also, a great point from um, Daisy a little bit earlier in the lesson. We do sometimes call um, indices orders. So you might have come across bid mass as bod mass. OK, so that's our 30 seconds up. Let's see how we all voted. A bit of a split in this question between A and B. So the majority of us went for answer option B. Were we correct? Well done. Now, for those of you who went for answer option A, I totally get why you would have picked A, because let's see both of those answers. Three um, plus six is nine. Nine times four is 36. But remember, Jono's tip on indices for the day, we don't do math problems from left to right. It's not like reading a book. We do math problems based on the bid mass pyramid. So on bid mass, multiplication comes above addition. So we need to do six times four first, six, 12, 18, 24. Then we need to add the three afterwards to get to 27. So don't just do math problems from left to right. Every time you see a math problem, have a little alarm bell go off in your head. That's like, oh my gosh, okay, don't just do it left to right. I've got to make sure I'm doing the bid math pyramids. Otherwise, John is going to know. Um, so make sure you're using that bid math pyramid. Well done for everyone that didn't fall into the trap and got answer option B really really impressive right like i said we're going to step it up three times four minus five let's go what's the answer 30 seconds starting now let's go a or b oh it's so much fun to see your answers come in so quickly 10 seconds and we have 300 answers really strong maths from everyone this morning I'm glad you approve of the rapid fire round, Albert. Okay, five more seconds to get your vote in. Three, two, one. Great job, everyone. How do we do? Again, majority of us, 90% going for answer option A. Really good, well done. Strong maths this morning. Okay, let's step it up. We've got some brackets now. What do we know about brackets in the bid mass pyramid? Oh, are we gonna, how many of us are gonna get it in 10 seconds? Okay, 200 of us in 10 seconds, pretty good going. Okay, half the time's gone, 15 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, how do we do? So we can see that the majority of us went for answer option B, 14, which is correct. Well done to each and every 541 of you um, that is absolutely um, putting your bid master knowledge to the ultimate test. Wow, words. Okay, we're getting a little bit harder now. I'm still gonna give you 30 seconds. Can we do, um, oh, I meant to relaunch the poll. Okay, what's the answer to the question on the screen? A harder one. Okay, I'll give you a bit longer on this one because it's a bit harder when we have about 90% of the votes in, um, we'll go. I'm glad, um, Hadija, you're finding the question so exciting. Yeah, I agree, Lucas. I don't know why some people vote for E, but you know. Okay, how are we all doing? Okay, we ha gave a bit longer on this question, but about 90% of the answers are in. So I'm gonna end the poll. Let's have a look how we vote it. Really good job, okay. So the majority of us went for answer option B, which is 31, really, really good. So in this question, we need to just, we need to use that bid math pyramid. So indices, we've got our brackets 
we've got brackets. So we need to do whatever's in the brackets first. So three squared plus four, um, that's nine plus four, which is going to be 13. And then we need to do 13 times by three, which is going to be 39. Then we subtract eight and that gives us the lovely score of 31. So a nice tricky question to um, end our rapid fire round. So remember always, if you are, if you found these calculations tricky and you maybe got stuck on a few of them, remember to use the bid, just write out the bid mass pyramid when you start the calculation or you know you have a mental math, math test, just write bid mass at the top of your page as a reminder to yourself that you need to do the orders of the operations first. Now, we've done some, um, we've done some rapid fire questions now, but um, what we're gonna do next is um, some wordy questions. So we've had our rapid fire excitement round, um, and then we are gonna go over some wordier questions now. Also loving the um, math jokes from Yi Zhang. Nurse, I have so many patients. Who do I work on first? Nurse, simple, use the order of operations. <laughs> so there we go. Nice little joke to help you remember. Um, so don't worry, just Preet, we're coming up with some harder questions now. So these were just our warm up questions. Um, now let's get into some harder lessons. Lessons, questions. Okay, let's get into it. So. Ariana wants to calculate how many hours she dances in one week. She always tries to dance for eight hours every day. So on Monday, Thursday and Friday, Ariana dances for two extra hours more than usual because she has dance lessons. On Saturday, Ariana danced for three extra hours in the morning as it was her friend's party. On Sunday, Ariana was feeling very energetic so she danced for four extra hours. <laughs> but dancing is not enough for our mathematician Ariana. She also loves maths. What we need to do is use which formula will help us calculate the total number of hours Ariana danced. So I've put the key information of in the sentence on this page. Which one of the formulas at the bottom is the correct calculation to help us work out how many hours Ariana danced for? So I'm relaunching the poll. Um, Protect, the first one is A, the second one is B, the third one is C, and the last one is D. So the first one on your left is A, seven times eight plus three times two plus three plus four is A. And then just work your way across the screen for B, C, and D. So tricky question. I'll give you a minute to have a go, then I'll start giving you some tips. Okay, so how are we, are we doing? I'll start talking to the answer because I think we're having a bit of trouble with this one. So we know, to start us off, we know that Ariana dances for eight hours every day. Now, how many days are there in a week? We know that there are seven days in the week. So the first thing we need to do is seven times eight because seven times eight will tell us the total number of hours that Ariana dances on an average day from Monday to Sunday. So seven times eight is the first step we need to do. So that, with that said, we can eliminate answer option C because that's just eight plus two plus three plus four. We know that's not gonna be enough because she does eight hours every day. So we start with seven times eight. Then we know on Monday, Thursday and Friday, she dances for two extra hours. So Monday, Thursday, Friday, that's three days. There are three days where she dances for an extra two hours. So that's the same as saying three times two. Because think about it, it's two extra hours on three days, so two, four, six. So I know that we need seven times eight and three times two in our answer. Because seven times eight is for every day of the week, and then three times two is for those extra days where she dances for two hours. That means we can get rid of answer option D, the one at the end, because we have three plus two. So just by reading the first part of the sentence, we've already eliminated two of our answer choices. 
if this was who wants to be a millionaire, we've just used our 50-50 and we've got two answers. I like those odds a lot more. Finally, we know that on Saturday, Ariana danced for an extra three hours. Now, for this is in math, you need to sometimes translate the words into um, symbols. So for an extra three hours, that's the same as saying plus three hours. So we need to add the three hours from Saturday morning. But Ariana was really energetic on Sunday. So she danced for an extra four hours. So we need to add a plus four um, for the dancing she did on Sunday. So what answer does that give us? How did we all do? Okay, well done, a bit close, but the majority of us went for answer option A, the first one, which is completely right, well done. So the different parts of this equation, seven times eight is the hours that she dances every day. So that's like her baseline dancing, which is just fantastic. Then Monday, Thursday, and Friday, she dances for an extra two hours. So that's three times two. That's where the three times two comes from. The extra hours on the Saturday, that's the plus three. And the extra hours on the Sunday, that is our plus four. So seven times eight plus three times two plus three plus four. And because of bid mass, we know that we need to do the multiplication before we do the addition. So that's why, um, that's why we need to know bid mass for um, these questions too. So yeah. It's a tricky question. I lulled you in to a false sense of security um, a bit earlier, didn't I? Didn't I? Uh, great point from um, John T as well in the chat of doing multiplication and division either way around because they are the complete inverse of each other. I would still stick to um, bid mass uh, as, a, as ordering it because it's just a bit of fun. But yes, great tips coming through in the chat. Thanks everyone for um, sharing your knowledge um, in these lessons. So, um, long dancing, right? I agree, Chloe. That's a lot of dancing. I would be pretty tired. But let's have a go at another worthy question to practice what we just learned. So Jessica wants to work out the total number of burgers that were eaten over three days at a food festival. Yum, yum, yum. Um, I love veggie burgers, but all kinds of burgers are acceptable. On first day, 20 people ate two burgers each. On the second day, 15 people ate two burgers each and 12 people ate one burger. On the final day, 30 burgers were eaten between 15 people. So what will her answer be? How many burgers were eaten? Let's have a go. I'll give you a minute to have a go and then I'll start giving you some hints. How many burgers? Nom, 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 nom. Okay, so we've had a minute. I'll slowly start talking to you how I would work out this question to give you a bit of a hand if you're stuck. So the what I, what I would do with this question is it can look a bit intimidating when you have lots of information on the page. So I would just break it down into one sentence at a time, make life a bit easier for myself, take it slow. We love a bit of chunking. So Jessica, she loves to count. I love to count too. We'll probably be friends. She's gonna count the total number of burgers that were even eaten over three days at the food festival, which is great because her manager needs to do like some costing analysis. So Jessica's being a good employee and helping out her manager. So on the first day, 20 people ate <clears throat> two burgers each. So, okay, we have 20 people each having two burgers. That's the same as 20 times two. So I would note down on my piece of paper at this point, I know that on day one, there were 40 burgers eaten. Now on the second day, 15 people ate two burgers each. So I would stop there. I'd like, okay, that's enough information for now. So 15 people ate two burgers each, 15 times two, that equals 30. So I know at this point I've got 40 plus 30, I've got 70 burgers at this point. 
And then I know 12 people ate one burger. So that's an extra, extra 12 that we're eating on day two. So to my 70, I add 12, which takes me up to 82. We then know on the final day, 30 burgers were eaten between 15 people. I think this sentence is trying to be mean and trying to have a little moment and confuse you a little bit. 30 burgers were eaten between 15 people. It doesn't really matter how many people the burgers were shared between. All we care about is how many burgers were eaten. So we know we had 82 at the end of day two and then 30 um, that were eaten on day three. So how many burgers does that give us in total? Let's have a look how we voted. So we can see the majority of us went for answer option C, 65% of us, 320 budding rocket scientists. And really well done, the answer is 112. So notice how in these wordy questions, we still need to rely on the knowledge we get from bid mass um, because we need to do the multiplications 20 times two first before we then add the 15 times two from the second day. So bid mass, it's not just for mental math questions. It is the operational device for so many, so much more, so much more. So that is our second wordy number operation questions. Okay, what I thought we'd do now is we've done really well on these wordy questions and we did really well in the mental health questions. So I think we're ready to do some of our hardest questions. So maybe I'll give you a little bit longer than the mental math questions, but let's see if we can get the answers in a minute. There's gonna be some multi-step operation questions and you need to get to the right answer. So are we ready? Let's go. Can you have a go at the question on the screen? Also, it's great to see so many people from all over the world. Hey to Denmark. Thanks for coming to the lesson. Okay, I'll give you another 20 seconds to have a go and then I'll start talking through the answer. Also, happy birthday, Elizabeth, wherever you are. Okay, so let's start going through this. So, Again, we just rely on our bid mass pyramid here. So we know that we need to do whatever's in the brackets first. So 700 divided by 100, that's gonna give us seven. Four plus five, that's gonna give us nine. <clears throat> so seven squared is going to be 49. We then have to add three times nine. Three times nine is 27. So we need to do 49 plus 27. So if you haven't got the answer yet, can you have a go at doing 49 plus 27? What does that give us? Another 10 seconds to get your answers in. <clears throat> okay. okay, let's have a look how we all did. So 250 of us went for answer option D, brilliant. Let's see if we were right. Well done, it is 76. So again, don't feel scared by these big questions. I promise you can do it. You just need to use all of the same rules you do for the shorter questions. Just rely on bid mass to give you that structure. So that was a nice hard question. I think we did, 250 of us did very well on that question. And I'm really happy that everyone else gave it a go because these questions are hard. You just need to practice them. And I promise if you keep practicing, you will get better. Math can feel really scary, but I promise you everyone can be good at math with practice. Um, it's a subject for everyone. 
Right, let's have a go at another one. This one looks terrifying, right? So what is the answer to this question? 16 minus six squared divided by two plus eight. Remember, don't do this question from left to right. Use the bid mass pyramid to get you the right answer. Ooh, an even spread of answers for this one. I'm glad I saved this one for last. It's a hard one. Okay, so we've had a minute, so I'll just start giving you some helpful tips. Or I'll give you some tips. Oh, what a good pun. That was a, some great puns from Noe in the um, chat. Um, and also just some general great um, math jokes coming through. Keep them coming in. It makes my lesson a lot more fun. So let's start going through this. So again, we just need to think about bid mass here. So we need to, we have a look. There are no brackets. So we know we don't need to do any brackets first. Next is indices, or you might hear them called exponents or powers or orders all mean the same thing. We love a synonym. So next we need to do the six squared, which gives us 36. We've done our, we've got our 36. We then need to divide by two because D for division is, there's no multiplication. Um, so, well, division's above multiplication anyway, whatever. So indices, six squared, divide by two, 36 divided by two, that gives us 18. We then have, um, we then need to do, Addition, we've then got addition and subtraction. So six squared divided by two, what's that gonna give us? We then add eight, and then we do 16 subtracted from that. So let's see how we all voted. Oh. Why was eight scared of nine? Because seven, eight, nine, classic math joke. How do we all do? So the majority of us went for answer option B, which is correct. Well done, everybody. So um, great job on this question, a hard one to finish. What we're gonna do next is, excitingly, tomorrow is our lockdown logic lesson, which if you, we're here for the last lockdown, in which case I'm really surprised you're still coming back and putting up with me, but I appreciate it. We did a lot of really fun lessons on, uh, well, I thought they were fun. I hope you did too. Lots of, a few people came. Um, we did a lot of logic and reasoning lessons. So I thought it'd be fun to switch it up a bit and let you guys pick what we do on the lesson tomorrow. So on the screen now, you should be able to pick vocabulary questions or statement logic. What I will do is I'll relaunch the poll and you can pick what we cover. Do we want to do vocabulary questions or statement logic? A or B, get your votes in and I will prepare that lesson for you today. So what do we want to do? Vocabulary questions and stuff like, um, synonyms, antonyms, homonyms, homographs, whereas statement logic is like, there is a fish and it's red, all fish are red. What does that mean about blue fish? That was a terrible example, but it's like really weird statements. And then you have to like pick which answer's right. I have to say the poll is like ridiculously close. There's about 10 votes in it. So if you have a strong preference, I would get your vote in now. Five more seconds, five, four, three, two, one, how do we all vote? So just clinching it with 50% of the vote as opposed to 47 um, is B. So we are gonna be covering statement logic tomorrow. Let me write that down so I don't forget it. Statement logic, writing in a Sharpie so I don't forget. Statement logic. Great, thank you all for voting. That will be tomorrow's lesson at 9 a.m. where we'll be going over statement logic, really, really good. 
So um, if you have any, um, so I'll just remind you of what else we're doing. So we've got Lockdown Logic tomorrow and then on Friday, we're doing setting the scene in creative writing. Where we'll be going over some literary devices and how you can use those. Um, if you have any questions about what was covered today, you can drop me an email or you can send us a message on TikTok where we also post study videos at Atom Learning. Um, and there should be some fun stuff on there too and some extra math tips to help um, with that. Um, but re to recap what we did today, we went over bid maths, we did some mental math questions, wordy questions and hardest questions. My tip for wordy questions is remember to translate those questions as you go. So extra often means add, you need to add something onto it. Of is often used to use multiply. So what is seven of eight is seven times eight. Um, mental maths, remember when you start doing mental maths, draw out your bid maths pyramids. Um, so you know the orders to the orders in which you need to do the operations. Don't just do your math questions from left to right, please. Make sure you do them in the order as described by bid maths. So we're always going from the left all the way. We're not going from the left to the right. We're doing it in the order of brackets, indices, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. So um I had a really, really good time in this lesson today. Again, it was also someone else's birthday. Happy birthday, Yasin's brother, and also happy birthday to Elizabeth. Um, I hope this maths lesson was the birthday present you really, really wanted. Um, and yes, happy new year. Love the little dinosaur as well, for those of you shouting out the cute little dino. Um, so that's what we did today. We'll be back tomorrow with Lockdown Logic. So what happens now, I hear you ask, well, you can leave the webinar when you're ready. There'll be a questionnaire to complete to about what we did well, what could be better, anything else you want to cover too. And then if you go on to Nucleus, there'll be, you'll be able to complete a learning challenge, which will be based on orders of operation. So that's a great opportunity to solidify everything we've covered today to help you remember it. A little tip, I remember my chemistry teacher taught me this. You need to learn something three times before it sticks in your brain. So this lesson would have been a great introduction. So make sure you go and do the homework after it um, to complete the learning challenge and I'll be able to see who gets 100% on it. So make sure you do it. Um, if you don't have Nucleus, give it a go. Free five day trial if you wanna try it, see if you like it, maybe it will be useful. Um, and there'll be adaptive activities that will get harder depending on how well you do after each of these lessons. So keep up all your hard work, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to this lesson. Really strong maths from everyone today, right from the easy questions up to the hard ones. I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, and I might see some of you later for, I think it's math club in the afternoon today. So I might be seeing some of you later for that. Have a wonderful day, everyone. And thank you for coming. See you later. Bye.